What's up, Fragrant World? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. This is a very special video because I'm filming this video in my new apartment. I just recently moved and this is the first video I'm filming here. Now I'm not gonna show you the whole place because it's still getting settled. I'm still unpacking and things like that. But here, I'm in a new environment. I'm really excited. I got a lot more space here and yeah, happy to be putting out some content and hopefully in a different way, you know, at least with some different viewpoints this time around. So today I got a video talking about 10 fragrances that I used to own. These are 10 popular fragrances that I used to own, but I don't own anymore. And why? Now I've done a couple lists kind of in this room. I did a list of fragrances called 10 fragrances. I'm glad I don't own anymore. And I also did a list of fragrances that I wish I hadn't gotten rid of. But these are fragrances that I did get rid of. I didn't necessarily dislike them. Yeah, I'll just tell you why I got rid of them. Even though they were so popular, everyone seems to love them, but for whatever reason, they didn't resonate with me. At least not enough so for me to keep them. So we're gonna dive right into the list. It's not in any particular order. I just have it sitting here in front of me, so I'm just gonna pick from it and I'll tell you why I don't own any of these fragrances anymore. First one up is Le Mal from Jean-Paul Gaultier. You probably already know this. I mean, this bottle is iconic. It's been around since, I think, the early 1990s. A uh, composition by Francis Kirkjohn, one that really got him on the map and one that was on every guy's dresser or countertop or bathroom or whatever. Everyone wore this. People still wear this to this day. It's still really popular. And I used to own it. And again, I didn't dislike it, but I found it very similar to this fragrance. And these two get compared pretty often. This is Reflection Man from Amouage. This is one of my favorite fragrances. And to me, this is a classier, more dressed up version of Le Mans. Now, if you want to smell fresh and clean, but still kind of sexy and musky, Le Mal is a good way to go. It's basically a fougere, very aromatic, lots of lavender, but it has kind of an almost dirty and musky vanilla to it. It's sweet. It used to be very loud. Now it's kind of loud. And this again is a more tamed down, more refined version of that. So once I got this, I had Le Mal, I'm like, I. I would always reach for this over that, so Le Mans left the collection. So Reflection Man takes the place of Le Mans from Jean-Paul Gaultier for me. And we'll see this pop up again pretty soon. Now, some of these fragrances that I'll mention were replaced by other fragrances in my collection, and that's why I don't have them anymore. But some of them have their own reasons why I don't have them. It may not be because I have a fragrance that replaces it, but some of them do, just to let you know. The next one up, we're talking about Blue de Chanel. I used to own the Eau de Parfum, I used to own the Eau de Toilette, and I enjoyed them both. I definitely enjoyed the Eau de Parfum more. And to be honest, I have been contemplating reacquiring it, but I think the reason why I haven't done so is because of this other blue bottle here, Elysium or Elysium, from the House of Raja Parfums. And this smells nothing like Blue de Chanel, I do have to say, but it is in that same vein. It's citrusy, clean, and fresh. It has this blue scent to it, as per the bottle, which is kind of hard to describe, but I think you know what I'm talking about. It's just easy to wear, basically mass appealing, super versatile, one of my most versatile fragrances, just like Blue de Chanel. And the reason why I got rid of Blue de Chanel was I got rid of the Eau de Toilette because I started to kind of dislike the smell a little bit. I just found it not quite as pleasant as the Eau de Parfum as soon as I smelled the Eau de Parfum. So the Eau de Parfum replaced the Eau de Toilette and then this replaced the Eau de Parfum. And I think the Eau de Parfum just got a little too basic for me. Just the DNA in itself, again, I still really enjoy it, but it just got a little too basic for me. And I stopped reaching for it because I was always looking for a little bit more depth in my fragrances, in my fresh and clean fragrances. Even on days when I need a dumb reach, I'm still looking for something that's going to keep my interest. Blue de Chanel wasn't really doing that, but Elysium does. 
if you know Raja Dove's fragrances, you know that they are deep. There's lots of notes in here, tons of notes. There's a lot of complexity to it, even though it does come off very easy to smell and easy to wear. There's a beautiful, again, clean citrus quality. I think there's grapefruit in here, maybe some other citruses like bergamot, maybe even lemon and things like that. It is kind of herbaceous and woody. There's even some florals in here. There's a touch of sweetness. There's a little bit of warmth and a little bit of spice. There's again woods, there's vetiver. There's so much going on in this and it keeps my attention every time I wear it. I spray it on and throughout the day I get these whiffs. I get my scent bubble and I take a deep breath and I'm just encapsulated by the scent. Even though it smells fresh and clean, there's always something a little bit more to it. So that's why I don't own Blue de Chanel anymore, all that to say. But that's Elysium, that's one to check out if you haven't already. Now, up next is a fragrance I've literally been on the fence to reacquire. And that is Dior Sauvage. I had the Eau de Toilette, I had the Eau de Parfum, I don't have either of them anymore. And it's not really because of any particular fragrance that I own that I got rid of those fragrances. I got sick of the DNA. It was a little bit too linear, so kind of similar to the Bleu de Chanel. But the Or Sauvage is way more linear to me. It got too linear, again, a little basic. I was looking for something more, even though I was going for a fresh and clean vibe. If I needed an easy to wear fragrance, I was looking for something more. So the Or Sauvage kind of left the collection. But I have smelled Dior Sauvage on people here and there in passing since I got rid of it and I, I'm interested in it again. I don't know. We'll see. I might pick it up. I might not. But that's the reason why I don't have it anymore. I used to really wear the heck out of it when I had it. And I think I wore it so much that, again, I got a little bit tired of it. So don't have it anymore. Up next, Aqua Di Gio. Profumo. I used to own a bottle and I don't anymore. It's one of those fragrances where I can see why it's popular. I understand why people love it, but it was just okay to me. It was always just okay. And I think it's because I kind of grew up smelling the Aqua Di Gio DNA. I owned a bottle at one point, the original that is, got rid of that. So I do appreciate what the Profumo does, adding that deeper incense to it. It's a little bit darker and a little smoky and that patchouli is amped up as well. It's more earthy. I appreciate that. And again, I have nothing bad against it. It just is okay to me. And that's why I got rid of it. And it, I got rid of it at a time when I was looking for fragrances that really wowed me. And that was one of them that just didn't. It was just okay. So it kind of lost its place. So that's Aqua Di Gio Profumo, a great scent, but again, just all right to me. Up next, this is one, if you watched my channel early on, I we're talking within the first year of my videos, I acquired Dolce & Gabbana's The One Eau de Toilette. I acquired that and I talked about it so much. I loved that fragrance. I wore the crap out of it. And it was a staple on my channel, but it kind of lost its place. I actually ended up letting it go. And the reason why I don't own it anymore is because I finally gave this a shot. The Eau de Parfum. Believe it or not, I never tried the Eau de Parfum. Never. But I've heard nothing but incredible things about it. Everyone features it on their list here on YouTube. Everyone talks about it. It's still relevant. So I decided to just pick it up basically blindly, even though I, I'm familiar with the DNA. And I gotta say, I definitely don't need the Eau de Toilette anymore. The Eau de Toilette was fine. Performance wasn't an issue for me, but this is even better. I wore this yesterday. It was on my skin like eight to 10 hours. I'm not kidding you. Fragrances do tend to last longer on my skin, just to let you know, so your mileage may vary. But man, it's that DNA that I loved. It's a little bit richer and it lasts longer. More, what more could you want? This stuff smells great. It smells really good. It's a easy to wear tobacco scent and that's what I was looking for. I picked this up, I'm happy I have it. And again, because of this, I'm not gonna get the Eau de Toilette ever again. 
So that's Dolce & Gabbana is the one. Alrighty, next up, Salvatore Ferragamo F Black Pour On. I own this fragrance. The only reason why I owned it was because Jeremy Fragrance hyped it up. So just like most people who were watching his videos when he talked about it, I went and bought it. And I found it pretty good, honestly. It reminded me of La Nuit de Long. And to be honest, that is why I don't have F Black anymore. It's because of La Nuit de Long. And this affected another fragrance that you'll see in a second. Basically, F Black, to me, if I remember correctly, comes off as a much more spicy La Nuit de Long. That smoothness is in there. It's sweet and kind of rich, but that pepper super spicy things I appreciated about it performance fantastic and when you wore it on a cold night people really appreciated it but to me it was actually a little too much when I would wear it I didn't dislike it but I'm like I wish I was wearing La Nuit instead I feel like that's just it fits my vibe better it fits my personality better so I got rid of F Black I kept La Nuit and the rest is history up next Prada Lone Believe it or not, I still actually really enjoy this fragrance. I got rid of it at a time when I was purging a lot of fragrances and unfortunately it didn't make the cut. But later on, once I got in a position where it's like, okay, I think I want to get it again. I came back to this one, Reflection Man. Now this one smells less like Prada Lone. It smells more like Le Mal to me and less like Prada Lone, but it's still in that genre of this clean, soapy white floral genre of fragrances. And yet again, this fills that role for me. Now, this is not to say that I will never pick up Prada Lome again, because like I said, I really like the scent. I actually kind of miss it and I might revisit it. But the reason why I haven't acquired it since getting rid of it is because of reflection, man. When I want to smell clean and put together and refined and elegant and kind of just beautiful. I reach for Reflection Man. It doesn't fail me and performance is fantastic. I get good performance out of Prada Lome too when I wore it, but this stuff, I can't, it can't be beat. Man, in terms of like easy to wear, mass appealing niche fragrances with fantastic quality and performance, this is a great value. So that's why I don't own Prada Lome anymore. Next is Mugler Cologne, all right? And now the reason why I don't own Mugler Cologne anymore is because I spent a lot of time with Creed's original vetiver, which let's all face it, is a copy of Mugler Cologne. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They cloned it, all right? And when I spent more time with it, I just found that, man, this, the quality of original vetiver is just so much better. It's so much more rounded around the edges. It's smooth and richer, but it's still clean and soapy. Or when I put them side by side after a while, Mugler Cologne started to get a little, it's gonna sound weird, but kind of acidic to me in a weird way. There was a smell to it that just smelled, again, kind of cheap. That's just me. It's a great scent. It has fantastic usability and utility, but for me, Original Vetiver just took the cake. Now, I don't own a bottle of Original Vetiver. I have a decant, which I'm almost done with. I actually used to own a bottle of Original Vetiver, and I got rid of it because honestly, I needed money at the time. So I got rid of some fragrances, but I'm kind of thinking about picking that one back up again. I'm enjoying my decant, but it's almost gone. But anyway, I'm going off track. The reason why I don't own Mugler Cologne anymore, even though it is a staple in many people's collection, easy to throw on for the daytime in the summer, go to the gym, whatever, is because of Original Vetiver. And I might get that one again someday. Alrighty, we got two more. This next one up from the house of Caroline Herrera. We're talking about CH Men Privé. And the reason why I don't own it is yet again because of this little guy, La Nuit de Lone. Okay, now this fragrance is nothing new. Obviously, I just talked about it, but it's been out for a good while. You know, we're looking at 10 years or something like that. This might be the 10th anniversary of La Nuit de Lum when we think about it. I think it was 2009, if I'm not mistaken. 
I had CH Min at one time. I had this with that. And for a while, I never thought anything of them being similar. They're not really all that similar, but that cardamom note in CH Min Privé, after a while, I would spray it on and I get that booziness. I'm like, man, it's sweet and boozy. Oh, it's nice. And there's the cardamom. But then again, after a couple hours, the booziness would wear away. I'd be left with that cardamom and I'd just be thinking, man, I wish I was wearing lawn and wheat. That's where my mind would go. So that happened so many times. The cycle continued to where I just stopped reaching for it, was reaching for this instead, and then just said, hey, I'm not wearing this. It's got to go. So that's what happened. Lawn and wheat replaced that one as well. This is one of my favorite night out fragrances, period. And I know many people share that sentiment. Cardamom King, Lan Huit de Long, is the reason why I don't own CH Men Privé anymore. And the last one up, again, no particular order, we're talking about Dior Own Sport. Now, I owned two versions of this. I had the 2017 version, which I reviewed a while back when it came out. And I also acquired a 2012 version. And both had their differences. After a while, I found it redundant to own both, but I was wearing them anyway. The Dior Homme Sport, the 2012 version, had that iris boosted up, whereas the 2017, if I'm not mistaken, got rid of the iris altogether. Kind of a totally different scent in some ways. The first thing I did is actually, I got rid of the 2017 version. I let that go. It's a nice scent. But again, it just got a little boring to me. And I started to miss the character that the 2012 version has. I'm like, man, this doesn't have as much personality. So I actually sold it. Had the 2012, I was wearing that more and more. And then for some reason, that one just got a little unusual to me. It got strange to my nose. I'd spray it on and I'm like, citrus and iris. It's super classy, but kind of casual at the same time and sporty. And Kevin Samuels, I think, put it the best way. He said it's like playing basketball in dress shoes <laughs> in terms of it being a sport fragrance. And that thought just stuck in my mind. And every time I'd spray it on, I'm like, what am I doing? Am I trying to be classy? Am I trying to be casual? I was always caught in this place in the middle. So I ended up getting rid of it. I was just kind of tired of being in purgatory about it. So I'm like, okay, I just want to have fragrances where if I want to be classy, I reach for that. If I want to be casual, I reach for that. This place in between, at least at that time when I got rid of it, I was not feeling that. So that's the reason why I don't own Dior Own Sport anymore, even though I know it's a well-loved scent. Many of you probably love it a lot. Great one for the summer and spring, but for me, I have others that I'd rather reach for that are a little bit more definitive on either side. So that is my list of 10 fragrances, 10 popular fragrances that I don't own anymore. So now it's your turn. Let me know one fragrance, one super popular scent. It could be one of the ones that I've talked about that everyone seems to love and wear, but you tried it, you wore it, maybe you liked it, maybe you still like it, but for whatever reason, you don't wear it anymore or you don't own it anymore. Let's talk about it. Tell me why in the comments below. If you like the video, then go ahead and show me one of these. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love to have you back. This is what we do here on the channel on Stay Fresh Productions. We talk about fragrances and we stay fresh doing it. So if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.